Hello and welcome back to my channel. Uh, I'm sorry that this video is very late. If you saw my community tab post, you will know that I uh, did get COVID and that was not fun. And I still technically have it. I'm, st I'm still testing positive, but I feel fine now. I've just got a slight lingering cough. But that was, that was not fun. I am fully vaccinated. I haven't gotten the second, uh, the second booster yet. So I think that's was kind of my downfall. I didn't get it because I thought that I wasn't eligible for it. Turns out I was, so I went through a lot of heartache, well, throat ache for, for no reason. But yeah, I'm gonna get it as soon as I test negative. But on with your, with your scheduled programming. And forgive the fan, it's very hot in Maine right now as it is everywhere else in the world and we don't have air conditioning. So you're gonna see me fanning myself. And I apologize, but, oh, I'm uncomfortable. All right, so today we're gonna to be continuing our series on the Gilded Age families of America, and we're going to be covering the Vanderbilts. We covered the Astor family last time, Vanderbilts this time. They're another incredibly famous family. You've probably heard of Consuela Vanderbilt. She's one of the most famous dollar princesses. The dollar princesses are American heiresses who went across the pond and married impoverished English noblemen. So the Vanderbilt saga in America began with Jan Artzoon, I think, A-R-T-S-Z-O-O-N, who lived from 1620 to 1705. He emigrated in 1650 to New Amsterdam, which is today Manhattan, and he was an indentured servant to the uh, Van Kovenhoven family, I think. Not sure how you pronounce that. The, the Dutch words are a little bit beyond me at times. But the family basically did nothing for about a hundred years after getting here until Art Zoon's great, great, great grandson, who was the famous Commodore Cornelius Van Vanderbilt. Commodore Vanderbilt lived from 1794 to 1877, and he began building the family fortune in shipping and railroads. He was also a bit of a philanthropist. His second wife, who was named Frank Armstrong Cranford, 1839 to 1885, convinced him to donate a million dollars to found Vanderbilt University. This is where Vanderbilt University comes from, thanks to, thanks to his wife, Frank, which is an odd name for a woman. He also had a rivalry with Jay Gould and James Fisk, who were two other robber barons. And we're gonna cover this when we cover the Gould family, I think. But this, I think, may be where that railroad rivalry in the Gilded Age was inspired. This, this rivalry he had with these two other uh, robber barons. At the time of his death in 1877, Commodore Vanderbilt's net worth was estimated to be around 105 million, which is 2.78 billion dollars today, give or take. He left 95% of his fortune to his son, William, or Billy Vanderbilt. His other 10 children sued, but they didn't get much. So we're gonna follow Billy Vanderbilt. William Henry Vanderbilt lived from 1821 to 1885, and he was known to be a hard-nosed businessman. When a reporter asked him if he ran the express trains for the benefit of the public, he replied, and I quote, the public be uh, D-A-M-N-E-D. We run them because we have to, uh, basically because other companies ran these express trains and if the Vanderbilt company didn't run the express trains, they would be run out of business, but they weren't profitable. But he did not care about the public. He cared about making money. That said, he was also a philanthropist. I think a lot of rich people kind of have to be. Uh, I'm not sure if there were tax write-offs for philanthropy back in the 1800s. I'll have to look into that. I'll cover that in another video if I can find any information. But he gave a lot of money to the YMCA, the Metropolitan Opera, the New York Academy of Music, and the Columbia University College of Physicians and Surgeons. His hard-nosedness paid off. When he died, he had a net worth of around 232 million which is approximately $604 billion in 2022 money. That's a lot. A majority of this money was split between his two eldest sons and we'll follow both of them. We're gonna start with Cornelius Vanderbilt II who lived from 1843 to 1899. 
When his father died in 1885, he inherited $70 million, which is equivalent to approximately $2.1 billion today. You may recognize his Newport, Rhode Island cottage, The Breakers, which was built in 1893. When he died in 1899, he was worth, it's a complicated number, $72,999,867. That is extraordinarily specific. 20 million of that was in real estate, or that is approximately $2.38 billion today. So he did expand his net worth a little bit. He, interestingly, is also the great-grandfather to one Anderson Cooper, who is probably the richest Vanderbilt descendant alive today, although he is his, his money does not come from Vanderbilt inheritance. Uh, his money comes from b being Anderson Cooper. I, I don't know how he made his money. Being a talk show host. A majority of Cornelius Vanderbilt II's money went to his son, Alfred Gwynne Vanderbilt. I think that's how it's pronounced. G Gwynne. He lived from 1877 and he died in 1915 on the ship Lusitania. He also seems to have managed to have squandered a vast amount of money because when he died, his net worth was estimated to be $15.6 million or $45.7 million today. So still a huge amount of money, but when you consider that his father's net worth was $2.8 billion or the equivalent of $2.8 billion, there's a lot of money left unaccounted for. I'm also not sure what happened to a majority of his money because a lot of it is left unaccounted for in his will. He left $1.2 million to his widow and to his three sons, plus $300,000 to each of them every year. All of his sons died wealthy, but not, not astronomically so. They uh, all seem to have died with a net worth of about $5 million, and that was split equally among their children. been completely quiet all day and then as soon as I sit down to film we get crazy people walking by. That was all split amongst their children and has been winnowed down farther to be not very much money at all these days. So back to William Henry Vanderbilt. This is Cornelius Vanderbilt II's father. His other son, William Kissam Vanderbilt, who lived from 1843 to 1920, inherited 55 million dollars when his father died in 1885. That is the equivalent to $1.7 billion today. You will likely recognize his mansion on Fifth Avenue in New York, which was built in 1883, and his Rhode Island cottage, cottage, Marble House, which was built in 1892. I've not been able to find... <coughs> <coughs> I've not been able to find a good estimate of his net worth at the time he died. He was the father of the famous Consuelo Vanderbilt, who lived from 1877 to 1964, and she became the Duchess of Marlborough. I talked about her earlier. She's one of the dollar princesses. Her great-grandson, who is named Charles James Spencer Churchill, 12th Duke of Marlborough, has a fortune estimated to be around $1.33.5 million. Add to that the value of the family home, Blenheim Palace, which was built in the early 18th century by Queen Anne for her, her favorite, the, the Duchess of Marlborough. This is also the childhood home of Winston Churchill, and it is worth, I'm sure, a pretty penny. That said, little if any of this money is actually Vanderbilt money. They've also got Spencer money, the Spencer family. This is, this is uh, Princess Diana's family, and if you've seen the movie The Duchess, she was a, a Spencer. The Spencer family was uh, arguably the richest family in Britain, so they've got a lot of Spencer money coming in. They've got Marlborough money, so this is this fortune should not be credited to the Vanderbilts, necessarily. Maybe some of it, but not all of it. Certainly not all of it. Oh, just checking my notes, there's also Jerome money. The Jeromes were another American banking family, and Jenny Jerome Churchill married into the Marlborough family as well. She was another, another dollar princess around the turn of the century. So there is a lot of money that's going into propping up this, this British aristocratic dynasty. Aside from the Dukes of Marlborough, I've not been able to find any estimations of the net worth of any of William Kissam Vanderbilt's descendants, but it is safe to say that the net worths have decreased with every successive generation. It's also very worth mentioning that there are many other famous Vanderbilts whom I just did not 
have time to cover here and who also managed to waste the family money in a variety of different ways. They, they were really interested in horse racing and, and horse breeding. A lot of them threw enormous amounts of money at breeding horses, which to me sounds like the most ridiculous way you could possibly use your money, but what do I know? I'm not rich. Like, I like a horse as much as the next person, but just like spending millions of dollars breeding horses just to get one that can go fast seems like a waste of money to me. But there are lots of other, <laughs> the point is there are lots of other Vanderbilts. There's the Biltmore Estate in North Carolina, I believe that was built by one of the, the poorer uh, Vanderbilt uh, grandsons who, who actually didn't have a lot of money by, by uh, 19th century Vanderbilt standards, by uh, pretty much anybody else's standards. He was still incredibly wealthy. So there are a lot of Vanderbilts who I didn't cover here, but I covered the kind of the main thing. Little, if any, of the Vanderbilt money remains today. Almost all of the fortune that was amassed by William Henry Vanderbilt was squandered by his descendants on palaces and, and horse racing and art and other luxuries and vanities. Somebody under my video on the Astors commented, I'm gonna, I'll put the comment up here, but somebody commented, the first generation makes the money, the second generation enjoys the money, and the third generation loses the money. And that is very true with the Vanderbilts. It's sad to see the family fortune squandered. I, I was kind of in support of the Astor money being given away. The Vanderbilt money was not given away, it was wasted, as far as I can tell. And I think that is quite sad. In 1973, 123 members of the Vanderbilt family gathered for a family reunion at uh, Vanderbilt University. And of those 123 people, none of them had a net worth of a million dollars. So, how the mighty have fallen. Hmm. I hope you'll join me next time when we'll cover the J.P. Morgan family. A huge, huge thank you to Mary Royal, Kit Kat Stitch, Emily Donnelly, Sandra White, and V. Birchwood for sponsoring this channel on Patreon. If you'd also like to sponsor this channel on Patreon, there'll be a link down below. If you don't want to or you can't, no hard feelings, I completely understand. I'm gonna also leave a link to my Instagram down below. You can follow me there and you totally should follow me there. I'll leave my email down below so you can get in touch with me if you'd like to. I, again, really hope you've enjoyed. Thank you so, so much for watching and please send me all of your uh, well wishes that I may be completely unpolluted by COVID as soon as possible. Thank you and I will see you again soon. Bye-bye. Uh, and I'll leave a, a a link to my email, or I'll leave a link to my, I'll leave my email down below so you can get in touch. With... <laughs>